Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be dropping the transmission in this 2012 Jeep Wrangler and replacing the clutch, pressure plate, and throwout bearing. So this Jeep has been showing signs of needing a new clutch, but what really caught my attention was the noise that the throwout bearing was making. So I'm going to fire it up here. You hear that ticking sound? But when I push the clutch in, it should the sound should go away. So if you could hear that, that was the throw out bearing making all that noise. So we're gonna go ahead, get underneath this thing, drop the transmission and get everything replaced along with the new clutch. Let's get to it. So before we get on jack stands, we're gonna remove both shift knobs, the shift boot and the center console. Once the console's off, you gotta take off this inner shift boot. There's supposed to be a nut right here, I think, but mine doesn't have it. So we'll just pull it right off. And then finally, there's a T45 torque screw right here. Remove that, remove the shifter and we're done in here and we can jack up the Jeep. Now that the Jeep is up on jack stands, we can go up underneath. And the first thing we need to remove is this skid plate with four 18 millimeter bolts. And then I'm gonna take out both the front and rear drive shaft. I have the front drive shaft completely removed. And then for the rear, I just took off the transfer case end, set it on jack stand there. So next we'll get the jack underneath the transfer case to take the weight off the transmission. That way we can uh, remove the cross member here. Once you have the transfer case supported on the driver's side for the cross member, you have two 18 millimeter nut and bolts. And then on the bottom center, right below the transmission, you have three 16 millimeter bolts. And then on the passenger side, you have another two 18 millimeter nut and bolts. And then two 18 millimeter bolts on the bottom. Once your cross member is off, you'll be left with that. The next thing to do is take out your Y pipe here. So you're gonna have two bolts on the driver's side cat, half inch and then two more on the passenger side cap and then a clamp right after the Y which was a 13 millimeter and once everything's unbolted you're going to want to take it out of the hanger here so just spray something in there get it lubed up and then whether it be a big screwdriver or a prying fork like this just get in there and pull that sucker out they can be a pain sometimes that one was pretty easy and then once you got it free just pull it down enough to clear the driver's side cap once you have those off, just keep twisting the Y pipe back and forth until it pops out. So next, with the Y pipe and cross member removed, we're gonna lower the whole unit, um, transmission and transfer case down as far as we can. But the thing to watch out for is how close your catalytic converters get to the frame. So we'll go ahead and lower it. All right, right about there. Just checking our clearances here. This um, passenger side cat is pretty much right on top of this upper control arm mount. So I went ahead and put a jack stand underneath the transmission mount where that cross member was. So next, I'm gonna take out the transfer case. This step is optional. It'll just be easier when it's time to take out the transmission. It'll be a lot more manageable to take it out by itself. And then when we reinstall, it'll be a lot easier to get everything lined up again. So for the transfer case, you have an electrical connection on top and a vacuum line that needs to come out. And then your four wheel drive cable needs to come out. So you just get a flat head and pop that off. And then the orange clip, you just squeeze together and that'll come off the bracket. And then there's six bolts that hold the transfer case onto the transmission that need to come out and then it should be free. With the six bolts out, I was able to easily remove the transfer case. So with the transfer case out, the transmission is next. We're on the driver's side here. There's an electrical connection right here that needs to come off. And then we'll move to the passenger side. There's a wire loom that's just snapped into place and then a 10 millimeter bolt holding like a bracket with uh, some lines and stuff on it. And then back over here on the driver's side, we're taking out the slave cylinder with two 13 millimeter bolts. And I just have it zip tied just to keep it out of the way. And then after that, we're gonna remove these two bolts to get the starter out. But first I'm gonna go up top and disconnect the battery. So with the two 15 millimeter starter bolts removed, I was able to just pull it out a little bit. I think I can get away with that and not actually have to remove the whole thing. And then after that, we have this bracket here on the passenger side holding the cat, just two 13 millimeter bolt and that bracket will come off. With all that out of the way, we are ready to start taking off the bell housing bolts, but before I get the transmission jack under here, I'm going to try and get these two very top bolts just so I have more room to work. So with all the bell housing bolts out, we were able to drop the transmission. Uh, I had to do a little bit of back and forth, getting the shifter to clear the top up there, and then getting the input shaft to clear. We got it dropped, so let's check it out. So inside the transmission here, we have the throwout bearing and the fork. So we're going to pop this little retainer clip off. And the fork and throwout bearing should come out. And then there's two little retainers that keep the throwout bearing inside the fork. So now if we compare the old throwout bearing with the new, if you spin it, it just makes a lot of grinding noise. There's a lot of play. Whereas the new one, it's just a smooth spin. So it's good we're doing that. Now we'll go underneath and uh, get the pressure plate off and we'll inspect the clutch. 
So we are here at the back of the engine with the pressure plate. There are six 10 millimeter bolts holding it to the flywheel. So I'm gonna take them off maybe like a half turn at a time, just evenly, make sure I don't warp anything. And then we'll be able to see uh, the clutch disc. So with the pressure plate removed, I could access the flywheel, got the bolts off, now we'll pull it off. So checking out the clutch here, it looks like it's almost wore down to the studs here. Overall, it don't look too bad though. I got a new pressure plate, but we're gonna check this one out anyway. It doesn't look too bad. There's no grooves in the teeth or anything, but that would have needed to be resurfaced. But we got a new one, so we don't gotta worry. So before I get the flywheel sent out to get resurfaced, because there is quite a bit of discoloration and burning on it, I'm gonna press out the pilot bearing, but I'm not gonna reinstall the new one until I get the flywheel back. So I got the flywheel turned around and a socket that fits just perfectly on the pilot bearing, 18 millimeter, in case you're wondering. And then I'm just gonna hammer it out through. So with that pilot bearing out, we're ready to send this thing out. So next, I'm gonna clean up the fort and the shaft here where the bearing rides uh, with some brake cleaner. So using the supply grease, I'm gonna put a little bit on the input shaft splines here. Be careful not to overdo that. And then the rest right here where the bearing's gonna be sliding. And then finally, a little bit of grease on the ball pivot. Now we can install the fork. I got my new throw out bearing on there. It just clips in nice and easy. So we're gonna slide that over. And then we're gonna put our retaining clip back on the ball pivot to secure the fork. And lastly, I'm gonna lubricate the face of the throw out bearing here. That'll be in contact with the pressure plate. So just a thin coat on there as well. And now that I have the flywheel back from getting resurfaced, I got my pilot bearing pressed in. We can go underneath and reinstall the flywheel. So with the flywheel held up there with one bolt, with a little bit of thread locker on each bolt, I'm gonna go through and tighten them in a crisscross pattern. Hand tighten first, and then to their final torque spec of 66 foot-pounds. Now that the flywheel bolts are all torqued, we are ready to put on the clutch. So the clutch should come with a clutch alignment tool like this. So with the correct side of the clutch facing you, you put the clutch alignment tool in, and then guide the clutch alignment tool into the pilot bearing, and you're ready for your pressure plate. And now with the clutch aligned and the pressure plate on, I have the six pressure plate bolts hand tightened, and now in a crisscross pattern, I'm gonna tighten them to 24 foot-pounds. Now we can pull out the clutch alignment tool and we're ready for the transmission. So with the transmission now under the Jeep, we can now raise the transmission and get the input shaft lined up with the clutch. This is probably one of the hardest parts of the job. If you're having trouble getting the input shaft lined up, you can always come back to the output shaft with your transmission and gear and give it a turn. That way it'll turn the input shaft and you can get it lined up easy. So I was able to get the transmission mounted up and like I said, it did end up being a pain in the butt. I got all the bell housing bolts started and then I just put the floor jack on the back here so I could get out the transmission jack. I ended up taking off the shifter here. I had a hard time getting the shifter itself right here to go up through the hole in the floor. I was having a hard time lining it up. So I just took it off. It's just these four T30 Torx bits holding that on. So I'll be able to just drop this through the top and then get it mounted up, no big deal. Next, I'm gonna put the starter back in and then I'll be able to torque down all the bell housing bolts. So I got the starter in there. Those two bolts were torqued to 41 foot pounds and then the rest of the bell housing bolts get torqued to 37 foot pounds. So the rest of the job is pretty simple, putting everything back together that came out. I'm not gonna film any of that. I'm trying to keep the video short just so it's a quick guide, but a quick rundown off the top of my head. The slave cylinder needs to go back in, transfer case, all the connections, four wheel drive shift cable, all the electrical connections on the other side, and then the cross member, and that's pretty much the basics of it, but it all pretty much goes together exactly the way it came off. And just like that, we have everything underneath buttoned up, so we're ready to get the Jeep on the ground and take it for a test drive. So I got the Jeep outside of the shop here. The one thing that happened when I was tightening one of the exhaust manifold bolts, uh, one of them broke off, and now there's a little bit of exhaust leak, so I'll have to fix that at a later time. I'm gonna start the Jeep up, and the ticket sound that the old throw out bearing used to make doesn't exist anymore so let's take a listen so everything is smooth and quiet as it should be clutch feels nice so let's take it for a drive so it definitely feels a lot better than it used to as far as getting it going gears feels good. So besides that exhaust leak, I'd say we have a job well done here on the clutch. So that's pretty much going to wrap it up for this video. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments below. I'm usually pretty good about answering, but that's going to be it for this one guys. And I'll see you in the next video.